Hello there my fellow freaks, how are you doing? My name is Alex and in this episode we will set up our development environment. First, we need to download Android Studio. Just go to bing.com and search for download Android Studio and select the top result, wait, I mean the fourth result. Since I am a Windows user, yes, you heard it right, you stupid Linux user, I will download the Windows distribution of the software. Obviously, you should select the distribution for your operating system. While waiting for the download, we will install Git so we can apply version control to our project. This time, go to yahoo.com and search for download Git and click the top result. And while we wait for this download, we will create a GitHub account so we can upload our project to our own repository. I've already created an account, so I will skip the account creation process and directly log into my account. When you have logged into your account, you will click start a project, which will let us create a new repository for our project. Select a repository name, write the name in the comment section of the video, the best and worst name will get a shout out in the next episode. We will not add any project description for now and we can make the project public. If you want, you can make your project private if you don't want anyone to access your code. And the last thing to keep in mind is to not initialize the project with a readme file, since that can give us problem later on when we upload our code to GitHub. Hopefully, the Git installer is now downloaded and we can start installing Git to our system. Now, you just have to click next, 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 next and don't try to read anything, it will only slow you down. Oh, wait a minute! We will configure Git to use Notepad++ as our default text editor. However, you can select whichever editor you prefer to use. Now, back to the Android Studio installer. You have to be really, really sneaky and hit the installer exactly when it's done. We don't waste any time here. Smash! Next, 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 until it starts installs. Finally, when Android Studio is installed, we will create our new project. Select the empty activity template and click next. Now we write our project name, preferably the same as we have on GitHub. It seems as the new default language to use in Android Studio app development is Kotlin, but we will use Java in this series. Why would someone use Kotlin? Please let me know in the comment section below. Now we have to choose a minimum API level we want to develop for. In the drop down menu, you will see a list of available versions. And if you select one of the versions, you will get an estimate on how many Android users will be able to install the app. For myself, I will use the inverse Pareto principle and choose an API level that will work on 80% of all Android devices. Then click finish and we are ready to go. I will not explain how all panels in Android Studio work and how all behind the scenes scripts build the application. We will instead learn what we need to know as we go along. The first thing we need to know is which script is the entry point to our application. If you look over here at the left side, you will see a project tab where the file structure of the project is shown. If we expand the project root folder, you can see a folder named app. Expand that folder and you will see the source folder where all the source code and resources such as images and sounds are stored. In the source folder, you will find three different folders for handling different types of code. The test folder will be used for storing unit tests for all our methods. And the Android test folder will be used for tests that we run on the whole app after deploying the app to an Android device. The main folder is where the Java code and resources are located. If we go down the Java tree, we will find the main activity.java file, which is the entry point to our application. Double click on the file to open it. Now it's time to run the application. Initially, before the project is built, the play button at the top is gray and disabled. But when everything is set up, it should turn green. Now we simply click the run button and, oh, it's not so simple. We have to choose a device to run our application on. We can do this in two ways, the fast way and the slow way. Let me explain. In Android Studio, you can emulate Android devices, such as phones and tablets, and even create your own custom devices. All you have to do is to configure a virtual device, and then it will work just as an ordinary device, with one small difference. It's super slow at startup, and it's hard to use for multi-touch input. We will now create a virtual device and run the app and after that run it on a physical device. Click create new virtual device and then select a device. I will pick Pixel 2 since it was the default device. Then click next and select an API that you want to download and install on your virtual device. Click next again and choose a name for it. Then click finish. Then hit ok and your virtual device will start. The first time you do this, you will be prompted with the option to install instant run, which will make the app install on the device faster. Click install and continue. Click finish when installation is done. And after a while, the virtual device will appear. And after some upstart process, the app will run on the device. 
we can change the display text to hello hello halo and now when we run the app again on the virtual device it will take much less time since the device is already up and running so don't close your virtual device after each run now we will run the app on a physical device this will only work if you have your phone set up for android development i will place a link in the description to a video which will explain how to activate your phone for development then plug your phone into your computer and hit run now you can see your phone in the list of available devices. Click OK and the app will run on your device. Now it's time to add version control to our project. And we will start by opening the explorer and navigate to where we have our project. We will then open git bash in our current folder. And I will just start by changing the font and window size of the terminal and restart git bash to make everything larger. The first thing we will need to do is to configure our git username and email. Just write git config dash dash global user dot name and your github username in the quotation marks and hit enter. Then use the up arrow key to get the same command again and change the name to email and write your github email address inside the quotation marks and click enter. You can then view your git configurations by typing git config dash dash list and click enter to see all settings. Then type clear and click enter to clear the screen. Now we will initialize git version control in the current directory by typing git init and click enter. As you can see, an empty git repository has now been created and all git files will be stored in a .git folder, so don't remove that. You may also have noticed that at the end of the current path, it now says master in blue. This indicates that of all our branches in our git repository, we are now on the master branch. You can think of branches as parallel timelines of our project, where timelines can branch out from each other, just as branches in a tree. For now, we only have one branch called the master branch. And for the most of the time during this series, we will only work on the master branch. Then, to get a status report of our repository, we can type git status and click enter. You will then see that the report concerns the master branch, and you will also see that we have made no commits yet. You can think of commits as snapshots of change information between different versions of a project. These commits are placed sequentially after each other like leaves on a branch. And you can, whenever you want, go back to previous commits in time to work on previous versions of a project. We also see that we have untracked files in our repository. This means that changes made to these files and folders in red are not stored. We have to add these files and folders to what is called a staging area. You can think of the staging area as a place where you specify which changes you want to add to your next commit. I will now clear the screen and type git log to show all commits we have on the master branch. We don't have any commits yet, but if we first type git add dot to add all of our files and folders to the staging area and then type git commit and then use the flag dash m to add a commit message and then write setup in the quotations we will have made our first commit to the master branch. We can then type git status to see that we no longer have any untracked files and nothing to commit. Then, if we type git log, we can see that we now have a commit in the master branch where we see the author of the commit, the date and the message. Now, we will upload our master branch to GitHub, but we first have to set up GitHub as our remote storage location. If you type git remote dash v, you will get a list of your remote locations. Now we don't have any, so we have to add GitHub by typing git remote add origin. And inside the quotation marks, we will write the URL to our GitHub repository. Go to your GitHub repository and copy the HTTPS URL, not the SSH one. Then go back to Git bash and paste the URL inside the quotation marks and hit enter. Type git remote dash v again to see that the variable origin now holds the address for both the fetch and push. We will now use the git push command to upload our local master branch and merge it with the remote master branch on GitHub. We do this by typing git push origin master, which means that we will push our local master branch to our remote master branch. You will be prompted to fill in your GitHub credentials and then the branch will be uploaded and merged. We can then type git branch a to see that we have a local branch in green and one remote branch in red and the current branch is master indicated by the star. That was everything for this time. I hope everything was installed successfully for you. 
and if you have any questions, you can write them in the comment section. I promise to answer all comments made within a year from now. Also, links with sources can be found in the description. See you in the next episode, where we will be creating a game loop for rendering things to the screen. And don't forget to like and subscribe.